Welcome to the Too Posh Podcast. I am Gabrielle. I am a former New York Mafia princess, originally from Austria. I am the mother of three and the owner of Too Posh Boutique. And here with my beautiful co-host, Marcella, my daughter. Hello, I'm Marcella. I'm a dancer, choreographer, model, and designer for Too Posh. And I say whatever the f- I want. Hi, my name is Cruz. I am a stylist. I also own the Society Salon in the design district and I am a short little Mexican with a big personality. I am Polly. <laughs> I am a certified sexual health consultant and educator, former professional dominatrix, currently working at the largest adult novelty store in the Texas Panhandle. What will they say next? Welcome to the Two Posh Podcast. <laughs> Linda Septian, welcome to Thank the you. Two Posh Podcast. We are so honored to have you on the show. You are, your life story is literally one that stands out from most that I, people I know. I mean, you have been there and done it all and you are the That's most... That's because I'm old. No. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I heard someone told me a long time ago that literally you are truly the best voice instructor in the entire world. Wow. I've heard this not only once, but several times. I would love to be that. Thank you. Really. (laughs) And I mean, people fly in from all over the place always to take from you. You have a long list. They call you the kingpin of um, voice and uh, talent. What's that called? Like um, developing development. Yes. And there's artist development. Artist development, mm-hmm. there's the talent code, there's the Septian code, like you teach, you're the CEO of Septian Entertainment Group, correct? Mm-hmm. And you've been around <coughs> for how long? Ever. Ever. <laughs> 30 years. 30 years. Yeah. 30 years we've been doing it. Yeah. Wow. So the truth is, you know what not to do. You don't necessarily know what to do, but you know what not to do. And that helps. That makes it. How she started, though, is crazy. She's an opera singer. Mm -hmm. How did you become an opera singer? Um, You know, that's all that was available in music other than rock bands. And uh, when I went to college, I began, I thought, that's what you do. So I went and sang for four years, got a degree in vocal performance, and uh, loved every minute of it, went on tour, lived in Europe for a while, sang, thought I was hot stuff. Um, in fact, became a diva. And tell then, me though, how did you even start singing? Like, did you always like it? My parents are musicians. Oh, they are musicians. musicians. Yeah. Okay, They're all okay. musicians. In okay. the blood. Yeah. It's in the yeah. blood. Yeah. My mother is 96. 96. And she plays ragtime professionally still. Wow. <laughs> what? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. 96 mm-hmm. years old. And That's ragtime? Amazing. What is ragtime? Um, ragtime is like a, if you see the, 20s and 30s mm-hmm. music and they're doing oh, wow. you know that kind of uh-huh. stuff yeah. she does that yeah. still wow. she still does it mm-hmm. she still plays and so i'm the third of she three children it. yeah so my older sister and is concert pianist my nephew is in istanbul i think right now he's with a band called midlake and uh, out of denton texas and they have a Tupac's um, label. They have a. They're on no that way. label, and they. This is their thirty or fortieth tour. Mm-hmm. Wow. Mm-hmm. And um, my other nephew. Well, he just got asked by Holland Park to be their uh, music director, but he turned it down to stay in Waco. Why we don't know. And <laughs> um, and then my other um, nephew is in stock brokering and plays at night so and of course my kids are in music so it's Man. it's really addictive or something but I didn't mean to really I loved classical music I still do I love it but I um the only reason I even stayed in it was because you become this it's very different than commercial music because you are actually an actress in that lane in, in that opera silo. yeah so I was a, I, I'm a soubrette. There's 26 different voice par- parts, and I'm a soubrette, which is called a heavy middle. And so when you sing classical, what they do is they hire you by your voice, how you were born. Okay? So they don't care about me. They care about she's got that voice so she can play the Ina roles in all these operas. And I thought, okay, 
great. So I, that's what I did. And, but I thought I was. So you a, specialized in college in opera. Mm-hmm. That's, but Only. you took voice lessons before that? Mm-hmm. Which, oh, yes. The yeah. whole You're time. in musicals and stuff in high school. Yeah. Oh, okay. And then, mm-hmm. so you specialized in opera and then you traveled the world. I, well, I mainly Italy. Yeah. I stayed oh. in Italy and Croatia. Yeah. And oh, those were two Croatia. places. Yeah. And you became Amazing. a, you became a diva. That's I became well. I became a way? diva until. So I what got, does that mean? Tell yeah. us what that means. That means you think you're amazing uh. and hot stuff, and nobody can beat you, and you think, "Oh, I'm getting paid for this. This is so wonderful," and then you decide, "Well, I'm just going to go do a uh, commercial album, which is like pop." And so I went to Nashville, got all my original songs together, got in the studio, and hired a great producer, and um, he's in back of that window and <clears throat> he sang he's like this one I'm singing and I thought oh I must have stunned him <laughs> and he looked at me and he said mm, are you gonna sing like that and I thought well I just came off of him it's a I was on a Michelangelo tour all places that Michelangelo had built oh, not wow, done amazing. frescoes oh I know gosh. right and so I got to see all these places he was a carpenter that's what he was I didn't realize he was I thought he was an artist, and that was it, but he's not. Anyway, so I went to all these places, the Michelangelo tour, and I had just come back, and they said, are you going to sing like that? And I said, well, yeah. And he said, that totally sucks. <gasps> and I wow. went, what? And he said, you have no feeling. You have no thought of a story. You have no ability to bring me into your life. This is This is garbage. <gasps> and I went, Oh, and you're a diva <laughs> over here at this say? moment when they're telling you that. Well, yeah, the other the thing How is, how old are you at this moment? Um, it was in the eighties. Uh, trying to think, in my thirties, yeah, in my thirties. Oh yeah, or late twenties, yeah. And so I thought, oh my gosh, I got to be, I've got to be better than this. And and I said, wait a minute, I just got hired to do all these months of tour. I can't be that bad. Or, and then I really do like learning. So I said, wait a minute, I've hired this guy, his name was Skip Sorrell, producer. And to make, to help me with this, he's either telling me the truth or he's a jerk, which, whatever it is. And so I thought, he's probably telling me the truth. So I said, okay, you know, I can fire you. And yet you're sitting here saying this, so therefore you must be truthful. And he said, I am. He said, you need to go, and you need to go be a diesel sniffer. Do y'all know what a diesel sniffer no. is? No. <laughs> it's a groupie. And you go, you go behind these. Behind the truck. Yes. Yes. You go behind the 18-wheelers. You know, there's usually eight, like uh, NSYNC had 98 wow. the trucks. And wow. they, they, had more, they had 50 that would go, and then the next... 50. I toured with them for a while. What? And they, they literally did this. And they would go from one city and do the next city. Well, I, I wasn't with them then. That was not it because I didn't know a thing about pop. But I was with, I just went with uh, Rolling Stone, anybody I could find. And I would go be a groupie. And I wrote <laughs> all these books on how, why the audience looked at these people what caused Mitt Jagger or whomever I was um, watching for them to look and go, well, or get engaged or um, to start dancing or not to leave to go get a drink? What caused that? And I wrote over 30 books on it. I never published. I just wrote it down because I just wanted to know for myself. So I'm sitting here writing and writing and writing and then going, hmm, yeah, that's not me. (laughs) That's in classical. You just... Ooh, you know, you just sing, and that's it. And you're just singing out. And so I thought, okay, and you're singing another language. And so it's, um, I said, I've got to f- figure out how to adapt those stories. Same thing in dance, how to adapt a story to that audience. And there is no wall, of course, in music. So I did that. And my um, first person I taught was Jessica Simpson. So, but oh, how did you get fur. from Nashville to Dallas? How? Oh, I got married. Yeah. Well, real, real yeah. quick, even before yeah. that, so all these books that you were writing, what was one of the top things that you noticed on somebody that was had that special? Well, that's the interesting thing. 
I didn't think they were any of them were really that special. The only thing, and this is that's a good thing. The only thing that I saw was that they had talent, but that's not enough. They had personality, but that's not enough. And what is it that they had, that it factor? What the hell is that, you know? And so what is it that makes them enough? It's all of that together. And they didn't have all of that together, naturally. Not very many people do. So talent is earned and created, not born. What's born is your ability to do it. Like, I can't play football, but some other guy can. I can't necessarily do certain things just because I'm physically not able. But um, that certainly is... Uh, something that you are born with, but not talent. Now you have <clears throat> where talent is created in music is pitch. If some people are uh, tone deaf, and they, they truly are, I've taught them, and it's painful. <laughs> it's very painful because you hit ah, uh, and they hit ah, uh, and you think, why wow, can't you, you can't hear that same note getting on the same wavelength? That's what that's called, and they cannot get on that wavelength. And when I do ha, ah, it comes to you, and you're able to match that. That's an automation that you're born with. And when they aren't, they are truly deaf. And can, so, do you that's a tell problem. people that? Like, oh yeah, you do. Yeah, yeah there's nothing to. you can do with tone there deaf. Is, there is. I just tell them it's not really worth it. Um, I can take. I took a tone deaf person that couldn't hear a thing, and she. I put her head against mine. I put her head on the piano, and she could hear the vibrations, which are frequencies obviously, and it's hurts per second, right? So she could hear it, and then uh, she could finally get it. But, oh, my gosh, that would be 40 years from now. So I just said, <laughs> Judy, I remember her. So, Judy, I used you as a test model. Go do something else. You don't need to be doing this. Don't do it. Don't do it. I bet you say that a lot. <laughs> well, not a lot, because most of the people, of course, obviously, that come now are people that have already sung. Yeah. And so they are... Right, actually, really good singers, but think about that. Do you need when you just hear a good singer? Now you're on. And excuse me, because I work for them. But American Idol, you're just now hitting high notes, low notes, loud and soft, but you're not feeling that story still. And so that's the hard part. Or or putting on an effect in the voice, which is what we do. Think of uh, Dance Monkey. Think of that gal when she sings. Oh. You know, she yeah, she's. You, you think song. think of what she sounds like, and she puts she's you know sing for me sing for me sing for me ha oh, oh I mean very uh, squanched right. and compressed she's putting an effect on her voice became the number one song worldwide for one year so, so much so the ASCAP did a whole study on it and because the effect on the voice is the most important so we put effects on voices also yeah instead of just in the studio right. We put effects on voices also. So there's all kinds of stuff you have to do. Yeah, it was. I didn't know a thing. <laughs> and then I went, oh. So I want to go too. back to Nashville. You mm -hmm. are now learning about all the people. Now you meet your husband where? Oh, I met him in college. You yeah. met him in college? Yeah, I met him in college. And I was on tour, and he was um, playing for the Dallas Cowboys. So he was um, in Thousand Oaks at that time. They played there. And we were both gone. And so ultimately we got a divorce because <laughs> I was, and he was there. And so we were always gone. I was on tour. He was on tour. So, yeah, it's and hard. And is that mm -hmm. Remington's dad? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's Remington's dad. And that's why his last name is Raphael, which is his dad's name. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Wow. All right. So, <laughs> and do you guys have contact with him at all? Yeah, yeah. He's, he lives on the beach in Cancun. Cancun. Loves it. <laughs> oh, wow. I think he has 90 kids now. Oh, yeah. man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> so he's, I did look him up. He's yeah. extremely handsome. He's a handsome guy. So no yeah. surprise there that you yeah. guys were a couple. He Well, he's, a, he's, a, he's also very gregarious. He's uh, always happy and very Latin. Very <laughs> Which is another reason why we may have broken up. <laughs> <laughs> How long were you together, though? Nine years. Nine years, long time. Well, no, we were there. We were together fifteen years, uh, six years. We dated for six years. You would have think I would have known, right? <laughs> yeah, fifteen years. Wow. wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you came to Dallas, mm -hmm. and then is that when you opened the studio, mm -hmm. or you just started 
And how did you find Jessica Simpson or how did that all happen? How did you decide to open a studio? That's not an easy decision. You know what? I didn't mean to. And this is the this is the funny thing is that uh, we've you know we've been hit up. I'm sure everybody has about with success magazines and things. How? What were your goals? What your goal? I'm going. Well, I'm, I didn't have any. I was in my house and I decided to start teaching after I'd diesel sniffed everything. And I thought, well, I'm just going to go and I'm going to open up this small studio. Uh-huh. And um, that's what I did. I just opened up a little studio, tiny. And, you know, put my name out there. My voice teacher here, a phenomenal lady, Madeline Sanders, she's amazing. And she was my voice trainer for years. I've had six different ones. She was the best. <clears throat> and she said, Linda, this is what you got to do. And she would just tell me everything I had to do. I said, okay. So I did that. And it was really interesting because I'd never, I didn't really plan on making a living at it I just thought I gotta tell somebody all that I know now you know it's one of those things you learn it now I gotta give it away right and you know she was the first one I pounded on bless her heart I don't even know how she got oh I know how she got to me they um she had lost okay Christina Aguilera uh Justin Timberlake JC and Brittany we're all in the Mickey Mouse Club. Do y'all remember that? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And so is that amazing? You all remember that. <laughs> and so so there, she was in the Mickey Mouse Club, and her father came to me, and, and she hadn't made it. Jessica, and, is mm-hmm, this? Okay. She hadn't made it. And so little known fact. And so he brought her in his little white Wrangler Jeep. I'll never forget. He drove up, and he brought her in there, and he said, um, I don't know what's wrong. And she said. <laughs> So we'll sing for me. And she sang. She was beautiful. She's stunning, gorgeous girl. And I said, well, it's certainly not her looks, but let's see what she sings like. And she started off, amazing gray. And I went, oh, okay, (laughs) that won't work. We sound like an old lady. So what are we going to do? And so that took like an old lady. (laughs) Five. Well, you know the church lady singers. Oh, yeah. 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 And, um, and you don't know which note they're on. And it's that's what she sounded like. I'm not kidding. She'll admit it. And so I said, okay, we've got to. And what you do, and I'm a vocologist, so I know medically what to do. Because then after that, I had to go to medical school to be able to understand it. But what? I became, what? well, you have to. You have to know, okay, she's got a wobble. What do I do about that? So, um, yeah, every year I have to go back to school. And so they, um, except two years of COVID, but they, oh. they, um, you know, you have your your vocal cords are really vocal folds, and when they get that relaxed, you've got to figure out a way to expand them, just like if you had a rubber band, right? So if I'm going, ah, I'm actually expanding that vocal, that rubber band, right? Because as you get higher, it gets law of physics, it gets higher, and so that's how it works. So I had to study that, and we did that anyway. She ended up getting a Christian. Um, show uh, Rhett label and then her show at her show though she was in, uh, at America the old American Airlines which was Reunion Arena and her boobs were out and they <laughs> and that's um, what happened yes and they <laughs> cut her because <laughs> back then you, you know, mean her boobs were out like they popped out or they were just she oh, was no. just she's, like she's, she's pretty sexy looking okay. she is that's those are natural those are hers and so she she. You know, just looked a little too much for Christian, Christian. audience, <laughs> and the Christian audience didn't accept it. Said, "Oh, wow. she's trying to be sexy," and it really ticked me off because I said, "Oh, I'm so sorry. So you can't have boobs as a Christian? I mean, well, <laughs> right. Is that it?" <laughs> uh, it? It really upset me, and so they they uh, they dropped her. And when they did, though, she got we brought her to Columbia Records, and she got a deal. But so, um, do you know what I remember about this? What? I went to. Ricky Martin's concert yes. at American Airlines oh, when Jessica yeah. Simpson yeah. opened yeah. for him. Yeah, we I, were on that tour. I remember this because yeah. I was like, oh yeah. my gosh, she's so cute. Yeah. <laughs> and then, yeah. She did. She was, uh, we were there. She um, she was at, we were at Madison Square Gardens when her, Ricky was, she was opening for Ricky. Right. She wasn't a headliner. And when she did, <laughs> she, she was up there. She'll kill me. Um, she was up there on stage, and she went to go 
this and bent over, and she had no underwear on, and her entire back pants split. No. Open. Yes. And we had, we didn't know, we didn't have a second costume. Oh, my God. So her mother had to take her clothes off, and put it on, it on backstage. It was awful. <laughs> and um, uh, Ricky, you know, hadn't quite come out yet. <laughs> and so his mother and I were sitting together and his boyfriend and I kept saying, who are you? Who are you? And meantime, he grabs, he goes back. I mean, they really tried to help her and she was so embarrassed. She couldn't get back out there. No it, way. Uh, it, oh, it destroyed wow. her. Now, today, it she, would be written she, up and going viral. Yeah. yeah. A totally different day. Totally. Yeah. Sure. Back then, you still had a few... Uh, walls. Yeah. <laughs> Not so <laughs> real. Not anymore. <laughs> no. Not anymore. Uh-uh. So mm-hmm. is that then like when your name really became known after that? Or? I mean, the, we're Jessica. Yeah. I mean, they, yeah. With Columbia. We worked, started uh, working with with Sony Records, obviously. But um, yeah, because then I got Beyonce and I got, I got everybody wow. that Sony was using then, you know. So I don't know. I mean, I'd like to say it was me, but. Perhaps it was just that was the voice teacher that now had worked out for Jessica, so let's use her. Who knows what brings it? But, no, but you have an unbelievable um, gift and talent. I, I'm telling you, people have told me this forever, and especially not too long ago, where it was like, she is absolutely one of the best in the world. That you have well, that thank you. talent. But, yeah. No, it takes a lot because if you... <laughs> the the understanding, I'll, I'll tell you something that humbled me a lot. Um, when the talent code was written, that's what really helped us was the talent code. So when Daniel Coyle wrote that um, New York bestseller, he did phenomenal. He's written Lance Armstrong's War. He's written a so lot of stuff. So that talent code is a book? Mm-hmm. Okay. You should read it. It's phenomenal. It's about myelin in the brain and what happens. Um, practice makes permanent. So if you don't practice it over and over and over, or if you do practice it over and over, let me put it that way, it forms, uh, the myelin forms around the endings, nerve endings, and it causes it to go into automation. So therefore, when I'm on stage, you have six different points on stage that you have to do. You're watching the crowd, you're singing, you're doing left brain, right brain, because you have lyrics, melody. Then you have to dance, you have to have time gestures on everything you say. You have to have rhythms and you have to, if you have a band, you're gonna have to lead the band. So all these things are going on, right? And um, we know that. I knew that. I knew, you know, ultimately, yes, all these things are going on because obviously I've been on tour. I have to listen and do it too. And um, But I didn't know what I know when he came. Daniel Coyle came into my office. I didn't know who he was. He's from Alaska. He has like 40 kids or something. <laughs> he has a bunch of them. And he came in and I said, who are you? And he said, well, I'm writing a book. Ignore me. I said, but how do you know us? And he said, doesn't matter. Just ignore me. Okay. So he sat in there while I taught. He sat in there. and uh, I mean, he was there for six weeks. Anyway, finally, I said, what book are you writing? He said, I'm writing a book with four Nobel Peace Prize winning scientists on myelin in the brain and how talent is created. I said, Okay. I said, that's great. Why us? And he said, because that's what you all do. I'm going to tell you, oh, no, I didn't know we were doing that until I read the book. And then I read the book and I went, oh, we are doing that. But the point of that story is that in the end, I may have been doing it, but I wouldn't repeat doing that had I not known that that was what was the way to do it. I would have changed it, changed it, changed it because I'm a changer. And when I read it, my head, like a dog, was going, whoa, I can't believe that. And so what it does, if you, any anything from sports to writing to dance to podcast, if you do it over and over in a um, consensual way to how the brain works, you just get, that's why people get so good. So that also means that at my age now, of course, it's the 10,000 hour rule, right? And so I can't put... 10,000 hours into tennis, let's say. So I will never be good. It's never going to happen. I will have fun. I'll have a hobby. I'll have friends, but I will never be good because you have to have that many hours to go into automation. And that's what the book's about. That's what brought us up. 
that's what helped us because it went on AB, you know, Nightline. You went on Nightline, and, I saw yeah, that. Yeah, it went on all kinds of stuff. So then PR took over, and that's probably what helps. Yeah. So that, and then he wrote two more books, and we were in it. And we got, and I'm telling you the backstory, but we got the most uh, PR, but that's because why? The other one was a soccer deal in Brazil. The other one was tennis at Wimbledon and um, and then a beautiful place in New York uh, with classical music. Which one are they going to want to watch? You know, yeah. <laughs> so they're going to want to watch the pop music. You right. know, so we got the television coverage, and that's the truth. But it was no different, if not less, than the rest of them. Because what those that Brazilian coach did, I got to meet and hear all that. Oh my gosh, what they did to those kids to get them out there—it was remarkable and beautifully done. Not not unhealthy, beautifully done. So read the book. You will it, it will blow you away, blow you away. Especially when you have kids, you will change your life on how you have them practice. It will change your life. Yeah, thank you. Mm. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. How many students have you taught? Do you know? Yep, seventeen thousand two hundred and eighty-seven. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Seventeen thousand. Yeah. 287. And so that's what I'm saying. I don't always know what to do. I have to kind of know that person. And the other thing is, if they don't have the work ethic, right? I can't. I can only, I can tell them, but that wall comes up and they then stop. I had a little girl that I'm not going to name because you know who it is, but she was on the back of the, all kinds of stuff. And she probably is my most talented kid. She is in her 20s now, early 20s, but uh, the voice is stupid good. I just, oh, my gosh. She lived with me four years when she was in high school because she was from another area. But she, um, I, I don't think there's anyone more talented than this kid. I don't think there is. Yet, she finally said, I was having trouble with her when social uh, media came about and all the platforms came about. It was very difficult for her to, to do that. And I said, you've got to. I can't do that for you. It's your story, not mine. I can help you post it. I can hire someone to get to film it, but you've got to do it. And she said to me after eight years, um, she said, you know, I just want to be on stage and I just want to sing. And that's all you want. I want you to do all the rest of the work. <laughs> I said, Okay. And that was it. Tore her contract up. That was it. She was part of our record label. We because were literally she, just talking about that. Somebody said there's yeah. a difference between if you want to be famous and if you want to just act yeah. or yeah. sing or, you yeah. know. There's a huge difference. And have you heard, um, have you seen or read, um, I mean read or heard, sorry, uh, Matthew McConaughey's Green Lights yet? No. Mm -hmm. Best book ever. Um, he is a literary genius, number one. But on top of all that, he's, um, I mean, he's a scholar in what he does. And everything he does, he pushes to the end. Get the audible on it, though, because he does all of the accents of all the different people he met from all over the world, because he's obviously an actor. But how he got all of his parts, which none of them, they really wanted him. Wow. And what he did I'd to get them. To listen to that. You, you will... You will thank me. Somebody else told me, and I said, of course, I'm in love with him. So I said, <laughs> That's easy. Yeah, he's gorgeous. And so I said, okay, I'll listen to that. That won't be hard. And he he is, it's so good. Green lights is so good. And what green lights mean in life um, and why you have to identify those green lights and what will help you, that oh, it would make everybody successful just to listen to this book three times. Oh my! Um, that's okay. how, how. I'm looking at that. Yeah, but make sure you do the audible. Yeah, I would. I can't yeah. read. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I can't read. I just can't. So ADD, I have to listen. You yeah. cut that into a clip. <laughs> <laughs> that's my new tagline. I'm going to make this into a gif so I can't read. Uh, so, do you know when? Like a Demi Lovato walks into your room. Do you know that this is their path? Do you know this automatically right when you first meet them or no? It's a great question. Um, you do know that they're an entertainer. Uh, most of my entertainers 
um, kids when they walk in. Demi came at nine. And when they are, they're coming in saying, let me sing for you. Let me sing for you. And then they go, da, 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 da. I mean, they're just no holes barred. They don't care. You know, at least they're an entertainer. But then you get, I had a um, a great manager that, um, y'all know Juice World. Of course, he's not with us anymore, but, um, and Marshmallow. But he, he was his, their manager. Anyway, he came in night before last, and I was showing him some of our artists, and the ones that were really good, he said, man, great voices, but they don't have that. And I went, good. Who do you think has that? I mean, one of the girls has such a phenomenal voice that I sat there and went, oh, my gosh. You, you, I hadn't heard her because I don't get to hear all the artists anymore. And she's killer good. But this one girl came in. And she has never been very uh, open with her personality or anything. You have to work to know her. And he said, she's it. Interesting. I went, really, Clint? What do you, why do you say that? I love that. Why do you say that? She says, she's got it. She just made me cry. And she knew exactly how to tell that story to me. And I want her now. That's what he said. Oh, my gosh. I and want her now. This is from yeah. from your um, artist from development master class. Master yeah. class, yeah. yeah. Yeah, this was two days ago. Yeah, and he said, "I want her now." And I and I smiled and I thought, "You saw that? What is that that you're asking? What is that that you see that that person? You know that that person would make it." And he said, "It was in that person." And he, I mean, he didn't. He would not. He's already called me when I was on the way on here. When can we talk? He loves love that person, and and very quiet, very introspective, um, definitely very entertaining, but not off the field, not at all. And most entertainers are shy, but at least they're mm, they at least give you enough that you go, oh, wow, okay. cool kid. Yeah, not 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 her. No, she's very uh, withdrawn. And then when she gets on stage, just lets it go. Interesting. Mm -hmm. You think Amazing. that's more difficult to work with some someone like that? It's kind of like reserved. <clears throat> well, the hard part is you still have to have something to sell. Mm -hmm. You have to have a personality to sell, even if it. I mean, today, especially on twelve platforms, you've got to have. Um, I mean, look, think of YouTube Shorts, which is winning right now, right over <laughs> Reels and TikTok. So if you're doing YouTube Shorts every day. Um, what do you do from the day before that makes today a big difference? Well, that's a person with an entertainment brain that's going, I could try this, I could do this, I could do this, I could try this. Some of it won't work. Some of you will be hated, hated for, but they still try. So it's very difficult when you're worried about what people think. And that's where I have a question. If you worry about what people think, and especially young people, they, we have contests in the in our master's program on the haters, and we, the people with the biggest haters, uh, win prizes, right, so that they <laughs> see hate as a good thing. <laughs> That's the only way we can get them because sometimes they're 14 years old, right? right? And so I want them to go, they're just living their lives. They don't mean it. They're saying things because they're sitting there doing, oh, I hate this person. I've done it. I've gone X, don't like that at all. What if I hurt somebody and they looked at me and said, man, she's a voice teacher, she's this, and I said, that wasn't good. You need to do this. I'm really trying to help them, but what if I hurt them? So they consider me probably a hater. But these, <laughs> these kids get lots of hate stuff, really bad stuff. So we have these contests, and then we have – I won, Miss Linda. I got the most haters. You didn't get it. I got it. And so then I go, they don't know, but okay, good. We got it. <laughs> We've got the, their mind in the right place that it's just BS. I love that. Can we switch. guess on this or not? Yes. I oh, yes. No? Okay. You can. Okay. Fuck yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. I guess that cleared that up. Yeah. Yeah. Now, yeah. you have two sons. Mm -hmm. Tell us about their music. Um, well, Huntington doesn't, he's a nerd, so he doesn't have, um, he's good. He's got a great voice and a great, he plays piano, he does all that. He's the younger one, but he he would rather be inside of a algorithm. And wow. so that works well, and that helps us. 
A lot. Great creative mind, but definitely rather be in front in in an algorithm, uh, which is what he does. Um, uh, Remington has had eight offers. Eight. Uh, eight. And never would he take them, and we never will know why. Why was he I saying? I don't know. What do you do from, as a mother? From Desmond Child to, I mean, you wouldn't believe what he's been offered. And um, he just, I don't quite know. I asked him, why would you not want that? He said, well, I think it was women. He was always dating somebody, and he always felt like he had to finish that situation. <laughs> so I don't know. It and when you say it, he has offers, what do you mean by that? Label he's offers. an amazing uh, thing. Oh, unbelievable. I, mm-hmm. I can't tell you how amazing he is. It's incredible. But he should be because he's been singing for, I mean, since he was 15 only, but he's been singing every day since then. So if you're not good, something's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Something's really wrong. And he's been around musicians and seen what's not good. Right. So he knows how to correct. But that. he's like, he has it. I feel like he has it all. He has the look. He has the edge. He has the personality. I don't She's know. Like, I don't know. What is he doing? <laughs> I have to ask you, did you pay that guy off when we walk in and he gets on the stage? Uh, <laughs> no. Oh, be it honest. Was, <laughs> it, no, I didn't pay anybody off, but I thought Mike was coming. Mm-hmm. So I put Mike You have to down. tell a little bit what because nobody knows what we're talking oh, about. Yes. Oh. <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> We, we were at a, a stripper club. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And we put okay. Remington on stage. Yes. 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 Mm-hmm. We had Gino's surprise 30th birthday party. My brother. We went to um, a karaoke place. And the guy that runs the karaoke, we all try and get him fired. He is such a jerk. Like, he is in no way a nice guy. And he, is he looks like he's the one that wants to be up there. Yeah, because he's a, yeah. he's a former member of a K-pop band. Oh, okay. And so okay. he uses this karaoke thing to sing himself. Like the bar is full. People want to sing, but he sings all the time. And we're like, give other people a chance. We sing the same damn song all the time. So yeah. it's tired of hearing it. <laughs> so we we went in there and I was like, well, we have someone coming. I had asked if he would allow them to use guitar. Absolutely yeah. not. And I'm like, oh, wow. why can't they play guitar? He's like, because it messes up my show. And I'm like, your show, this, the show is only as good. It's a bar. It's a karaoke bar. Your show is only as good as the people that are going to get up and sing. So annoying. So I just <laughs> put down the name and literally he had come up to me one second before you guys walked in. And he goes, is Mike here? Is Mike here? Is Mike? And you walked in. I go, yep, Mike's here, right? here." <laughs> <laughs> he put him right on stage. <laughs> Well, it, was, it was so great because I, I just wondered because this the other Dana when she came she said I had I had to pay him thirty five bucks no to get up way there. she paid him paid him thirty five oh, no, uh, evidently the line is long and there it's okay think about that that's how many people want to get up and, and sing. sing I love karaoke I, I yeah. suck sing? but I love it <laughs> okay I get but, food all the but, time. but tell me. Tell me why you like it. I, I need like, to know that. I, I like to sing. I like <laughs> music. And it's just fun, especially when you're drinking. <laughs> True, but so, you can you can sing at home. And so what is it about karaoke bar that says, at least somebody's watching me? Entertaining people? Maybe. I don't know, because I've actually done karaoke when there's nobody there, too. You know? I just, okay. It, the fact that you just kind of get up there and... You know the song in your head, so you sing it, or at least me. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and yeah. Well, some people get nervous performing or being on stage. So if they I, haven't had a few drinks, yeah. Yeah, true. Do you too. still sing? Mm-hmm. I do. When I don't we sing want as to much. Hear you. <laughs> you know why I don't as much as um, some of the other coaches that we have? A lot when there was a point in my life, I used to sing a lot of anthems. <laughs> Don't be impressed. I was on the anthem series. So I sang, oh, say, can you see? Constantly. And I sang it for the Mavericks, the Stars, the Cowboys. I sang, 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 sang. And then they would, I probably did a thousand. No and, way. Oh, I had to. Oh, I hate that song. <laughs> I, I was about to ask that. And used to, it used to be God Bless America. That when, uh, long years ago, when Carter owned the, the um, Mavericks, it was God bless America. And even that, um, 
I said, I was in the middle of it, and I, I was not obeying my own rules. I had sung it so much, and I was going, <laughs> the Channel 8 guy was sitting there. I was going, from the mountains to the mountains <laughs> to the mountains, white with snow. And he's going, did you get the fuck out of the white mountains? <laughs> <laughs> When I looked at him, I said, I forgot the words. I forgot the words. And he said, oh, my God. And I started laughing because he's well, whoever that Channel 8 uh, news reporter is. And he said, oh, my gosh. I, he, when he said that to me, it was so funny because I don't really cuss that much. And he cussed. And I it relaxed me. Uh, yeah. It right. really did. And I said, oh, they'll never at me again. And, and you know, it's interesting that what they started, what started happening is I had singers better than me. And I had a Jessica, I had a Demi, I had whomever, and they, the people would love them much more than I. And I'm not saying that as humbleness, I'm saying that as truth. So now I'm competing against my artist, but I'm teaching them. I don't like that. So I put myself out and I said, no more. I'm done. I'm hanging it up. I'll sing for somebody's wedding. And I'll sing maybe once a year I go and sing a classical thing. I'll go, I, I got to go to Russia. I got to go several places and just sing two or three weeks and my ego is served. <coughs> and, but that's it. And so I didn't do it anymore. I'll, I'll do karaoke if we're all having fun and drinking, <laughs> but, um, but not, no. Mm -mm. And I, I do not book myself at all against my students. My, my clients will be more important than I am. And a lot of my coaches, I tell them, you need to eventually adapt that to not, it can't be about you. We are training yeah. them and we're not to be the ones that are, because obviously we're going to be better in some ways or we shouldn't be teaching them. So why are we the ones we already have experience and they get it. Mike sometimes likes to sing more. <laughs> he loves it because he's a new singer. He's a new oh, singer. He's a new mm -hmm. singer. He hasn't sung very long, two years, maybe. Oh, wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, He's great. We love He's Mike. He's great. Um, mm -hmm. So, like, 